Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 128. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? Today, school is back in session. It's been like three months already since we did the last one of these, which is crazy. It's summer school. Actually, last assignment went pretty good, but it wasn't enough to raise their grades, I guess, because we're here for summer school. I mean, there's definitely some that needed it. Well, this assignment is a topical one for once. We're still not cool enough to get preview codices, but everyone got to see the new Vindicare assassin, so we're going to grade every faction sniper. Sounds good. All right, so let's talk about the A student leading our assassination classroom anime reference within one minute. Nailed it. <laughs> I'm so excited for this one. It's so cool. The Vindicare Assassin. Oh my God, dude. D- did you read this? It's so cool. <laughs> It is honestly a really fun data sheet. Like, usually when they do previews for a codex, it's like whatever. But I think everyone is on the same page with the Vindicare Assassin being just fucking cool. The Exodus Rifles profile combined with Shield Breaker. And Deadshot's kind of cute with the, like, ignoring Lone Op is like, okay, it's funny that he can shoot anybody. But Shield Breaker making it so that all successful wounds are crit wounds and add one to the wound roll. On something that has dev wounds. Wounds. Yeah, it's scary. I mean, I was excited when I looked at both of the range profiles and was like, there's four keywords here. <laughs> I'm in. And none of them are psychic. (laughs) Exactly. They're upsides. (laughs) They're all upsides, not just the strict downside. And then, like, you just keep reading it and, like, Shield Breaker actually working with Dev Wounds, Strength 8, Blisk Skill 2 on a 48 range. It's wild. I'm here for it, dude. This is a cool data sheet. (laughs) So your snipers are going to have to get graded based on something. I'm not going to run the math on each one of these, but it has to feel impactful if it's targeting a leader leading a unit. Like, you want to be able to pop an overlord or space marine lieutenant or something. Yeah, I think that that is one of those key parts is being able to actually focus and target a specific model, and doing it at range is also part of the whole sniper profile thing. Yes, (laughs) if you're under 24 inch range points are getting deducted and if you're in melee you fucked up (laughs) boy let's start real strong with an f (laughs) in the obviously sniper tier faction of sisters yeah so adeptus sororitas what do you have for your homework how about the cannon ass which of these 40 weapon options don't say a melee one Uh, yeah, there there are a few options in the uh, sheet, but we're particularly looking at the Condemner Bolt Gun. The Crossbow Bolt Gun? It's the wrong era, but, you know, there was a time when crossbows were, like, the snipers, you know, right? Mm. So, like, I, you're in the wrong era, but your mind's in the right spot, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm, I'm grasping the straws on this one a little bit. All right, so it's got to be able to, like, threaten a character. So how much damage does this do? Well, let's uh, focus a little bit more on on the fact that it's anti-psyker 2 up with dev wounds. Okay. What if they're not a psyker, though? Is it like high strength? No, it's still a bolt gun. Four strength. Oh. One damage. All right. Well, at least it's got like two AP, right? No, zero. Oh, no. But it has precision. So (laughs) we can actually pick the leader out and shoot him you can target the leader probably hit your shot fail to wound (laughs) and if you did by some miracle get the wound then they just save it on their normal armor save yeah but you might devastating wounds and if it happens that's a whole mortal wound sisters you can have a d you technically have a two up ballistic skill you got 24 inch range on it you got precision technically you filled out the barest possible minimum i mean they could also so bring the Retributor squad to join with the Cannon S and get an additional... Oh, like five more bolt guns? Not quite five, no. Oh, how many is it, Eric? Uh, just just one extra. Oh. But that's, that's twice as many, okay? <laughs> We're at twice the strength for triple the points. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's not great, but like, they tried. They could miracle dice the six on the wound to dev wound and do one mortal. If they do that every round of the game, they'll take the lieutenant out. Or, you know, they could just use the other weapons and stuff and just like <laughs> kill the squad and then charge and, you know, do what sisters does. Yeah, this is not, not a great sniper. No, be happy that I'm feeling generous at the start and giving you a D for this. Yeah. Custodies. <laughs> Disappoint me. Oh. Oh, do I have a disappointment for you? It better not be a bolt gun. Oh, why do you say a bolt gun would be a problem? <laughs> Eric, those don't even have precision. Yeah. The prosecutors with their bolt gun, rapid fire one, 24 inch, one attack, ballistic skill three up, strength four, zero AP, one damage. But if they're attacking a psyker, it has precision and dev wounds. So we almost get to the point of the condemner bolt gun. Uh, you would have five of them in that case, at least. Unfortunately, it requires psyker. <laughs> so like our captain and lieutenant, no. Necron's not known for psyker. You get those Grey Knights, though. Oh, yeah. That's what we want our 401s against, is the Grey Knights. <laughs> <laughs> Known weakness. Five shots of 401. Yeah, that's that's definitely the scariest part. I mean, is this like a D minus? I just want to give it an F and say you didn't submit something. This is just straight up failure territory. Hopefully we can do better with Admech, though. Admech, I know, has something. The coolest guy. The tall boy. He does have options, man. He's got, actually, he's got two different precision weapons that he can choose. If we're being extra fair, he will have a ballistic skill too and heavy if you're well, he's got heavy on both of these guns, but he's got ballistic skill too if you're in the correct doctrina. Yeah, I think we can kind of make the assumption that that is like what's happening. Yeah, I'm not going to do if we use this strat and this and this, then we can make a character, but I'm going to assume that you have your normal army rule, maybe a detachment. That's the Hail Mary pass if you've got nothing default. Right. But in this case, we've got decent ballistic skill, clearly a sniper rifle, two of them to choose between, depending if you're going for like foot heroes or monsters or vehicles. Yeah, so I mean, we've got the Radium Gisele, which is anti-infantry, heavy precision, and uh, 36 inches for both of them. Everything is just one attack. That's fine with a sniper. I mean, it's fine. The A-plus perfect student got the same. Even the anti-infantry has at least strength five, so AP two and damage three. And the anti-infantry is anti-infantry three up. Yeah. So you're never wounding on worse than a three against infantry. And his Achille and I is reroll the wound roll in a addition for whichever target is correct for its gun. Right. So the Scratus Transarionic Arquebus. Say that six times fast. Can't even say it once slow. <laughs> is uh, anti-monster four up, anti-vehicle four up, heavy precision, seven strength, two AP, D3 damage. And also gets the reroll wound from the thing. So all of this together feels a lot like a sniper. It does. And to give him the sneaky department, he's got his like very tall pretending to be a telephone pole look? Yes, the tall boy. Very sneaky. He looks like the other Vindicare assassin model where he's up in the giant sister statue. <laughs> He brought his terrain with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he also has the lone op and stealth abilities, so he's clearly sneaky. He unfortunately is a little dopey looking, but that is not one of our problems. I honestly think Admech gets the highest grade A+. I don't have anything to knock them with. Not really. Shockingly. Perfect grade. Well done, Admech. Let's move on to Imperial Guard. Okay, well, we're getting to one that is a proper unit of snipers. So we're good there. There. We just can't look at the models. So data sheet first on this one. Rattling snipers. They've got their sniper rifles. There's five of them in the squad. They each get one attack. They hit on ballistic skill three by default. They've got only four strength, but it is guard. Minus two AP and flat two damage. Not bad with a 36 inch range. Yeah, heavy precision. It can hit on twos. Usually heavy is not useful on these types of guns because you already hit on twos as a sniper. But since guard always has to take the being a little bit worse the heavy matters here yeah and i mean the 
strength four is not great but everything else is like yeah this is a sniper and since you have five models together like you're probably gonna hit stuff they have infiltrators and stealth so like doing sneaky stuff what do they look like though i mean they clearly have snipers is it clear it is they might be toy snipers we don't know that yet but these things are hunks of metal that are almost as big around as they are actually <laughs> long <laughs> These are some Coke can sniper rifles these guys got. Yeah, the models are very old. They are, in fact, metal. Wouldn't lick the lead, but I can't fault them on any of our technical points other than, dear God, why do these still exist? That's about right, because, like, they are snipers. They do the sniper job. They look like snipers. Everything is right. They're just very very old and i don't think we can really hate on them the only thing i would knock points for is low strength yeah it's kind of my one flaw is strength four is pretty low for a sniper i got mad at sisters for it so we do have to dock some points here but like other than that they don't really fail anywhere else do you want to give them like an a minus it would be like a high a minus of like almost had it if you weren't hideous i might honestly lean towards <laughs> a but the short stubby snipers is so sad looking it's funny that you bring that up because like I'm not taking any points away because they are these old models but if they were a new beautiful model like something you know like the Vindicare Assassin or some other newer models I'd be like all right you can get the A you get the the little nudge to bump the grade but no so A minus all right it's time for your homework Eric please submit something good this time <laughs> All right, how about the Brotherhood Librarian? Weird sniper, but I'll hear you out. Yes, a weird sniper, but we're in 10th edition and I cast gun. <laughs> <laughs> you cast Barrett 50 caliber. That's basically right. Purge Soul Focused Witchfire. Hazardous Precision Psychic. 24 inch, which is a bit low, but a one attack, ballistic skill three up. Not great there, but uh, six strength, AP two, and three damage. It's not bad. It's not bad. 24 inch is like the bare minimum I'm okay with, so it crosses the line. Being hazardous without even like dev wounds is a little sad. I'm not gonna lie it's a little weird i mean they can always fall back and just vortex a doom somebody but uh well you're not falling back and doing that because that's only 18 inches that's true you're falling back towards them <laughs> fall back forwards yeah <laughs> a forward <laughs> retreat yeah clearly it doesn't look like the brotherhood librarian is carrying around a sniper rifle <laughs> No, you're losing in the looks department and you're not getting any points in the sneaky department. However, data sheet wise, you make it. Just barely though. Strength six, two AP, three damage. We're there. 24 inch. Yeah three up yeah i don't know man it's not it's not a stellar grade i'll accept that we're scraping by i'm okay with like a b minus or something here though i was thinking like if he gives me a b minus i'll take it <laughs> yeah i have trouble faulting it it's not an a this is not what a sniper looks like this is not it but it does technically pass the line for the gun being a leader is always a little weird if you can't lead a squad that is heavily sniper <laughs> What are you talking about, dude? The Paladins are definitely snipers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, not really sneaky, but like maybe you could say Deep Strike kind of helps. You're only arguing your way into the B minus. You're not getting more points out of this. I'll take it. Eric, what the hell did you put in Knights? Sir Hector, obviously. All right, moving on to Space Marines. Come on, he's got lone operative and he has a gun. It's a pistol with a 12 inch range. No anything else. There's no trick. I mean, infantry. He's a dude with two legs. <laughs> he doesn't start that way. You have to blow up Kana's Rex first. I mean, that was gonna happen anyways <laughs> No. That was all part of the plan. No. See, that's no. why he's so sneaky. No. Imperial Knights fail. Move on. Space Marines. All right, Space Marines. Which one did you choose? It's the Eliminator Squad. Yeah, it is. It's the dudes with sniper rifles. There's only three of them, which honestly is a little more sneaky to me than the five mans that we're going to have for most of the unit-based ones. I feel like five man was fine when it was just like dudes with guns. When you're a Space Marine in power armor... 
three is going to still be pretty obvious compared to five dudes. Yeah, it depends how elite your faction is and how big your models are. Yeah, I agree. But Infiltrator, Stealth, Eliminator squads got the things happening there. All right. And you've got several options to choose between for your snipers, one of which is more a cannon. No matter how popular it is, it's just a cannon. <laughs> I do like the switch hit between the instigator bolt carbines, which are like, they're not nearly as good as the full sniper, but they let you be mobile. And then the full sniper. That's cool to me. Yeah, the carbine, 24 inch, it's only strength four and only does two damage. Still solid. It's going to get the job done when it's got precision. But the full bolt sniper rifle, heavy precision, 36 inch, five strength, two AP, three flat damage. This is the exact profile that I think of for what a, a 10th edition sniper looks like more or less don't forget they have marked the target as well so if you're going to be stationary you get dev wounds yes which now numbers wise dev wounds on three shots is not a lot but sometimes it matters it is helpful for making it a scary sniper i will say they do get the bonus points for the sneakiness not only do they have the abilities on their sheet but i like their like tactical cloak things they've got that like mirage you into the surroundings pretty cool mostly because i've seen the sickest paint jobs of them so i mean there's no real negatives on it clearly they're a sniper squad to me this is like as much as tall boy is our this is what a character one will probably look like i believe the eliminator squad is your ideal unit version yeah i think so i think we just give them the solid a maybe just the full a plus have them match the tall boy full a plus i'll give it fair <laughs> enough we did not say that you had to be a single model kind of thing if there was 30 in the eliminator <laughs> squad we'd be having some words but three i think that's a fair unit for a sniper so a plus and with the vindicare himself representing the new codex of imperial agents which is unfortunately now a full faction i have to deal with that fact dude i'm excited it looks kind of neat i just now everyone is going to ask the same question of where's the imperial agents one on every old episode of ours which is thankful as i am that we're going to get a bunch of free engagement i'm unfortunately going to have to read those but uh <laughs> Vindicare still brings in our default A+, plus, which wraps up the Imperium. Moving into Chaos, Chaos Knights gets an F, as is tradition. Moving into CSM to show off an actual unit. Yeah, we've got the Traitor Guardsman Squad. Oh, there's options. It's not the greatest because you only get one special weapon in a guard squad for this. But you do get a cultist sniper rifle. So, like, good start on the naming. You get a <laughs> Hope and a dream. <laughs> yeah. Heavy precision. All right. 36 inch. One attack. Four up ballistic skill oh that's not great yeah no we're gonna have a conversation in a second here gw four strength not good either two ap and two damage those are fine so going back to an imperial guard with our snipers four strength minus two two damage same deal three up ballistic skill now you might say well brad but in ninth edition the problem is he would give the whole unit a three up then and that's not fair but in 10th edition where we live unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> ballistic skill is by weapon. This weapon could have been given a different ballistic skill. True. Did not have to just take the four up at the top of that Excel sheet and drag it down the column. Oh, but they did. I get mad when I see things like this where it's like, come on, you put a sniper rifle in a unit and you just copy pasted the ballistic skill four up. Yeah, it's wild. I'm not asking for anything crazy like a two up, but just the three up to match the guard one that's right over there. We just saw it. You probably had to check it so you get your strength, AP and damage to match. <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually probably true it's pretty sad it's the sniper rifle and then they put cultist in front of it and decided to increase the ballistic seal to four up but it's not even held by a cultist it's by a guardsman he's just not a guardsman who is loyal to the emperor which clearly means he's a shit shot and as such you fail i just want to give this like a flat out d technically you brought a sniper rifle you forgot the scope you were apparently drunk when you were at the range trying to figure out if you were any good 
you can join the Canoness and be lucky that you got a passing raid. Just barely. In a shocking turn of events, Death Guard for once actually does not have homework to submit. This may be their first failure? Maybe, actually. To me, I always think of Death Guard as A students around here, or at least B students. It's just kind of shocking they get a full did not turn in their homework. I cannot believe that they didn't have any snipers. They're just slacking. But moving on to your faction, I think we've got good opportunities. All right, so Eric wanted to shout out the Demon Prince, which we can do real quick. The Demon Prince has an ability that lets him give a unit precision, so you can turn a bomb of Terminators or Rubrics into an anti-character thing. It's once per battle, but it's still kind of neat. It's once per battle, but you killed the, the weeder that you wanted to kill kind of thing because you gave the entire unit precision. And because of his actual psychic aura giving stealth, you could argue he's got the stealthy thing covered. It's cute. It would probably score a low grade, but it'd be a nice Hail Mary pass. We don't really need it, though. We've got Zangor Enlightened. Because Zangors are here to save the day. Zangor are here <laughs> to save Thousand Suns. <laughs> I'm just happy we get to talk about Zangor Enlightened, especially bow ones, which I think look sweet, even though they're always trash. They're not sneaky. All right. So what is what is the uh, great bow that we're going to try and make a sniper? 30 inch range, precision. Not bad there. Two attacks instead of one. So you know things are about to turn bad suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> and default ballistic skill is four up, sadly. And again, I know why and how to improve it, but the point is you start off with a four up ballistic skill with two attacks instead of one attack at a good ballistic skill, which you could argue this is usually going to be better once you're buffing things, but the point is still the same. It's less like a sniper rifle. We do have strength five, though, AP minus one damage two, so it's a slightly worse per shot sniper than like the Space Marine equivalent. The real thing, though, is three of them is 45 points, so when we're actually comparing points to points, you get like 12 shots for the Space Marines 3, which means they actually are a pretty cool hypermobile sniper unit. They have the unfortunate thing of they're not very sneaky. They die to a smelly fart. It's got some downsides. <laughs> but uh, they are a passing grade. Like this is truly a sniper, but with bad accuracy, but more shots. It's a sniper on full auto. Yeah, which is why we called it a great bow. I'm not going to take too much off by being a great bow instead of a sniper because like great bow mediocre sniper good pun <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, the Zangor Enlightened is doing the sniper unit thing. I don't think it's doing it really well. Oh, no, it's not an A by any means. Honestly, it makes me feel a lot like the Grey Knights did, where it's like the Grey Knights is the technically this is passing a lot of what we asked for, but you're not a sniper. Right. But like you didn't actually read what we wanted. You just like, I swear you just got lucky and wrote <laughs> down words that actually got to what we wanted, sort of. You pulled a pre-existing homework out of your bag and went, here, I'll submit this. I say the B- minus is probably right again. Seems fine. It feels very similar, but on the unit end instead of the character end. Yep. Okay. Overall, I'm quite proud of our little Zongors. B- minus is a great grade for a Zongor, honestly. In 40k, it's the best they've ever had. But I'm interested in this uh, World Eaters submission because World Eaters is obviously known for their excellent ranged capabilities like a sniper would expect. World Eaters submitting the Master of Executions, a model only equipped with a bolt pistol for a ranged weapon. <laughs> it's not even like a special bolt pistol. It's just a bolt pistol. That has pistol keyword and it's 12 inches. It is the same bolt pistol that are on the Berserkers. He is no doubt leading. <laughs> However, they argue that they do have a precision weapon on this model. The Axe of Dismemberment, the melee weapon, does indeed have precision. And it will kill characters. It absolutely will with murderous swinging. This is a character killer and has a gun. I gotta say, the only thing they, that they really failed here is the looking like one and the whole range part. That's the real kicker, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, great job to world eaters for like attempting, attempting uh, the whole like character killer with a ranged option thing. Hey, we can do that too. This is the Wayne Gretzky. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. True. I want to give them a better grade than they should have because of that though. A D plus just to be better than sisters. I think a D plus is a perfectly <laughs> reasonable one just because <laughs> like world eaters, your sniper is uh, master of executions. 
Good job. You're the only one getting away with this, though, world leaders. No one else can follow this up. So I think we have to round out with demons. Oh, demons tried the same trick with Shalaxi here. Uh, no, you can't just repeat the trick. Especially when you do it kind of worse. Yeah, and Shalaxi's got, like, real ranged weapons that are not sniper-based. Unfunny. <laughs> it was funny when world leaders did it. I'm calling HR for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so demons fails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think there's any real hope for them, even with Shalaxi. As a faction, you mean, or in this assignment? Yeah. Okay, let's move on to Xenos. I think we can start extremely strong, or at least the expectation is that the Eldari, all of them, should have decent shooting options, right? Some would say they're known for it. The Ranger squad is obviously the pick. That seems like a strong contender. <laughs> they are just the elfy equivalent of the Space Marines squad you get less good shots but more models i mean they've got infiltrator stealth they have the ranger long rifle which is heavy precision 36 inch one shot ballistic skill three up four strength one ap and two damage but five models yeah and by the time we're up to like the space ring pricing we're closer to the 10 than we are the five they're totally fine the low strength is really painful here in addition to being an ap and a damage down like it's a lot of minuses here yeah it's just everything other than the range is just one worse which you didn't have to be quite as good as the vindicare assassin but you're not quite as killy as the sniper should be yeah it's just it's extra awkward because they don't even have trick to get over their bad strength. Right. Like, it's not like this unit just has a way to skip the strength portion of this or re-roll all wounds against certain targets like some of these others do, anything like that. They're just stuck on the, like, mobile version. Yeah, no anti or whatever. It's just fine. So, I don't think it's going to get an amazing grade, but it's definitely not bad. Do we put it in a B? <laughs> yeah, probably just a solid B. Not quite as high as I had expected, but a solid, solid submission. But off the top rope out of nowhere with the steel chair is harlequins back from the dead for 45 seconds oh shit the death jester could not not show up here oh yeah man the death jester is definitely showing up to this competition and this submission it's honestly the thing giving the vindicare the most run for its money here as far as like the character snipers go tallest boy's very good though for what he is tall boy is pretty good but like death jester feels like the laughing man option compared to Vindicare Assassin because uh, that Shrieker Cannon, pretty scary. It's got dev wounds, 24 inch range, three attack. Two up ballistic skills, strength six, AP one, and two damage. Importantly, you can choose between giving it ignore cover, precision, or sustain hits three. So he can basically set it to like full auto mode with the sustain hits three. That's wild. Or he can just set it to precision when he actually needs to snipe. It's a cool gun. <laughs> It is quite a cool gun. The vindicare has got like the dedicated 50 cal. You've got a choice of a couple weapons for the ad mech guy. And then you get to Eldar and in a very Eldar fashion, it's not as dedicated gigantic sniper as it is like a mode switching jack of all trades sniper. Yes, but the actual model, that's a fuck off big sniper. <laughs> it is. The model is so <laughs> sick. It's definitely got the cannon part down. Yeah, it passes everything we've asked for. A, for sure. Yeah. Does it go to A+. Plus? That's the thing, is like, because you have to enable precision, it feels like it's not actually a sniper so much as it is this cannon that you're then like, oh, I'm going to be super careful this time. <laughs> but, like, it's pretty good. 24 inches comparing back to the Vindicare Assassin 48. But, you know, we get gave Ad Mac their 36. 24 passes the line. That was my line that I said is it has to be 24 inches. Yeah, but if you're going to get an A+, plus, you're like above and beyond, right? I'm not trying to argue down to an A-. minus. It's absolutely an A. It's just, did you go to the A+. plus? Okay, okay, so it's not an A+, plus then. I am with you on why we're not giving an A+. plus. It's close, but A 
Go ahead. All right, now we have to do with some disappointments. Drukari time. We've got lots of cannons. But the only sniper we've really got is, like, Rax with a hex rifle. I couldn't think of much else that I could choose here. No, but I think that's a reasonable start. I mean, they are precision. They're heavy. They're 36 inch range. Unfortunately, there's only one in the squad. Sure. It's doing better than, like, the traitor guardsman. Three up ballistic skill and then six minus two three is solid. This is a good sniper. It feels like a kind of weakish character sniper that's just been tossed into a group that isn't really sniperish. It's funny you say that because at times we could give this to homunculus, so yes, but also no. <laughs> but like because of that, it kind of loses out on the stealthy part. That's not really happening here with the rack. Is it a C? No, I think it's a bit higher than a C. Dare I dream B minus? It might be a B minus. It's a it's a C plus B minus. I mean, it's kind of cheap if you just go with the five model. Yeah, B minus seems fine. It's a strength six minus two, three damage. Honestly, Indrakari will take a B minus. It may be one of the highest scores they've gotten. <laughs> Yeah, they only really understand boats. Boats and pain, I guess. One day. When we get to everyone's S&M characters, we're in. <laughs> Speaking of S&M gene stealers, segue. How did you get there? You went from leather to, to jeans? Sure. Did you get that? Leather to denim? Yes, denim. They're stealing people's jeans. <laughs> and are they bleaching it? It's getting very late, if you can't tell while listening to this episode. <laughs> um, so, Gene Stealers has an obsession with snipers. We had at least three options worth looking at. The Keller Morph is a no because he's got his 12-inch pistol. Otherwise, very cool. Cool would have been a pretty bad grade, but like... The Jackal Alphys and the Sanctus are about the same. I'm saving Alphys because I actually have an idea for a different episode. So we're going to do the Sanctus, which is a very vanilla sniper pick. And I think the Sanctus just fits better when you look at it like oh, okay this is a sniper because i mean it's got cult sniper rifle anti psyker two up because psyker's only a downside heavy and precision 36 inches one attack three up ballistic skill five strength two ap and three damage that is a sniper and he is very cheap <laughs> that's true also a couple other things going on with abilities but they don't really matter for this he's very sneaky with deep strike infiltrator lone operative and stealth all right, then. He could not pick his sneaky ability. He took all of them. Yeah, I can be anywhere and everywhere and nobody will ever know. Not even me. <laughs> I'm the dude playing the dude. <laughs> Yeah, Sanctus is an A to me. I think it's just an A+. Plus. Yeah, that's a long sniper rifle. It's just an A+. Plus. It, it's a sniper. He is an ugly face. Mine will not have the default face. I will say that much. He just has the ugliest rat man face. I mean, it's Gene Stealer. It's not like a typical Gene Stealer scrotum face. He looks like a rat. He's like the evil henchman side character in every Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> not the main one, the like evil henchman. Actually, yes. Doesn't it like really feel in a weird way yeah you know the archetype definitely gonna be back every once in a while randomly because like we reuse assets <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, that's not bad for a sniper. Like, you're not being noticed kind of thing. You're not standing out. No one really wants to look at you long. Yeah, I think it's an A+, dude. All right. Votan, very late, running into the classroom, seconds left to spare, submits the Jaegers. <laughs> yeah, the Hernkin Jaegers. Not Jaeger bombs, just normal Jaegers. Just normal Jaegers. They got grenades, though. And they actually have the Magna Coil Rifle, which has ignores color and precision 24 inch one attack four up ballistic skill five strength two ap two damage has infiltrators so kind of sneaky a little bit a little bit not much a dwarf equivalent of sneaky <laughs> they're trying <laughs> They're trying. My main problem here is the same with Drukari. Of uh, you get one of these. It's worse though because there's ten models in here. It's not a super expensive unit though. It is not. But one out of ten is a little rough. It is a bit rough. 
especially like this is not an amazing sniper it's fine and we're only saying fine because like there's ways to make the ballistic skill slightly better and actually hit stuff whatever but the four is still a problem it is <laughs> It should be a three and then you get better kind of thing because it's a sniper. Yeah, I want to say like they're not getting above like a C minus here. Yeah, I cannot see any better than that. For a last second homework assignment out of the new kid, I'll take it. But like... Oh yeah, because there was nothing else. There was literally not precision in this army when we checked the index. There wasn't even anything that was like kind of trying to act like precision. Where it's like, oh, we do this in a weird way. It's basically... Basically, C minus, and we're happy we got that far. It's obviously a sniper rifle, but it's not particularly good, and you're not particularly focused on being a sniper unit. Take your C minus and move on. <laughs> to Necrons. Necrons, I'm pretty proud with the death marks here. Not a great unit. Never has been. However, I actually like them, but for a sniper, they're doing their job. So you've got your heavy precision, 36 inch range, one attack, ballistic skill three, strength five, AP minus two. The only knock off versus the space marines is two damage, not three, but there's five of them, not three of them. Right. So it's actually feeling like a pretty fair trade here as opposed to where Eldar had everything down. This is just feeling like solid A territory for what they are and like the gun looks like a future robot sniper i do love that they do the instant reflexive sniping when something enters near them it's a very neat ability even if like your opponent has to play into it <laughs> that is the problem but it's still cool it is still cool and like sometimes you can set it up that like the alternative is they just don't play i almost marked them up for how they look till i remembered that i don't use the official model <laughs> I forgot that mine is actually a proxy from like a Puppets War model or something or somewhere else. I forget what it is. I still think the official one is obviously sniper-like. They've got the sniper right. It's the rest of them doesn't look very sneaky. Oh, they're not sneaky at all. No, they're bright silver with nothing cloaking them and it's a little ugly. The only possible way you could argue being sneaky is that they're just part of the silver tide. <laughs> That's loose. <laughs> That's real loose. <laughs> I still want to give him, like, maybe not the the full A, but like an A minus. I think it's at least an A minus. Clearly a sniper unit doing sniper things, but not white there. Just missing a little bit. I feel like it's probably an A minus with, like, the little nod, you know, of like, hey, good job today. You'll get it next time even better. I have faith you're going to nail it next time kind of thing. You know, like the positive affirmation of, like, you did a good job. Someone had to tell me that sweet Eric. thank you anytime <laughs> all right let's move into your army orcs 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 i love that this works it's so stupid it is so stupid and it's so orc because you don't really think of uh sniper and accurate shooting when you think of orcs but i give you the weird boy along with 20 boys just backed up by a little bit of 20 boys <laughs> <laughs> They're just the muscle behind him cheering him on, right? <laughs> They're there for moral support. We could have chosen 10, and it probably would have been more intelligent, but 20 is funnier. I mean, we're clearly orcs. If you're bringing boys, you bring the full 20 boys. Okay, so what is his profile by default before we add the boys? He has the Ed Banger, which is a precision psychic, 24 inch, 1 attack, 4 ballistic skill, 6 strength, 3 AP, 1 damage. Okay, this is bad. It's not terrible, okay? 1 damage, but Ballistic skill four. Ballistic skill four, but strength six, AP three. Not bad there. AP three is big. One damage. We're to the miracle dice for one mortal wound meme here. <laughs> Save it with 20 boys. So while it's leading a unit, we can add a strength and damage characteristic for every five models in the unit, rounding down. And while it has 10 or more models, it gains hazardous as well. Hazardous is a downside, but it's hilarious because it's orcs. It absolutely kills you. Happens. Done it a few times. Worth it every time. So with 20 boys, we've got one attack, ballistic skill four, still very bad. Strength 10, AP minus three, damage five. You're probably going to miss but if you don't they're fucked <laughs> <laughs> It's definitely the, when it gets to the roll your invuln, because you know it's hitting the invuln. When it gets to that point and you're rolling that die, you're like, goodbye, character. <laughs> <laughs> 
And like, out of all the snipers we've had so far that we've talked about, this is the one I would be least angry about having my character die to <laughs> because it's so fucking stupid. <laughs> And, like, they're probably also losing the hazardous role as well. So, like... <laughs> you left a weird boy and 20 boys alone, and then you were like, damn, the consequences of my own actions. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, for a ballistic skill is a big problem. <laughs> Needing to be leading 20 boys is a big problem. It's another problem, yeah. I will still give you a C+. Plus. I think a C plus makes sense. It's not really sniper-like looking type things. No. Definitely not trying to be sneaky. Like, technically, you have the jump to, like, surprise somebody, but you're not sneaky. It's a shockingly good sniper rifle profile that you can cook up, though, considering your orcs. Yeah. There wasn't much else. The fact that my fallback personally was like the shock jump dragster. That one probably wouldn't have done well given <laughs> it's on wheels. <laughs> I'm happy about the weird boy showing up on this one. Let's move on to Tao though. T Ow. Yes. You have to make sure the pause is long enough that when the editor removes <laughs> silence, nobody will even know you had a pause. It shortens it down so it's not the <laughs> five second silence I actually put in there. It just removes the entire <laughs> silence and it sounds like you had a slight hiccup. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously we could have gone with Crute's. Crute has several options. The Lone Spear, the Firestalker. I liked the War Shaper because you can give him the enhancement. Very cool. But... But the actual submission to this homework assignment was the fire site team. You knew it was coming. <laughs> we found out this crazy bastard still exists. Yeah. And like actually works on this one. Get those fine cast drones out, dust them off. So three attacks with these drones hitting on fours because Tau. However, if you guide it, it'll hit on threes and it has, if it's guided, it also rerolls the hit. So it can hit very well. Their strength five, AP minus one, two damage. So they're almost as bad as Eldar here with losing out on how a sniper should actually be dealing some damage, but it's not like totally awful. It's still sniper rifle-ish. Yeah, and you have to remember this is a character, not a full unit. Well, it's a character now. Yeah, designer's note. <laughs> <laughs> three shots for a character is a lot of shots compared to the usual one they would get, which can help make up for how bad the AP and damage is. And the ballistic skill four up is not great, but we're in Tau. There's ways. We're going to assume you're playing normally. So I can't really fault that too much. And it's got all the sneaky. Infiltrator, lone op stealth. It's not really failing here. I have trouble taking points off as much as we did this just for the joke. Yeah. Thoughts on looking like a sniper rifle <laughs> yeah that's that's the awkward part the three drones with the sticks coming out of them questionable where's the rifle <laughs> but it's fine. I'll give them like a B plus. B plus. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. I snap picked it because it made me laugh because we had just joked about it on the last meme episode. Right. It's a sniper. It is a sniper. It does all the things right. Yeah, I think a B plus makes sense. And if you disagree with this fact, you can tell us down in the comments. While you're down there, just do the rest of the YouTube pleasantries if you would. Check that you're subscribed. Wow. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, let's end up with the weirdest homework assignment. <laughs> I submitted my entire codex. <laughs> <laughs> I submitted my index detachment. <laughs> So, Tyranids is rounding us out here today. We're not going to use Invasion Fleet, but we are aware they could have just picked Invasion Fleet. And then everything kills characters with precision. Yes, it's crit hit only, but when your artillery has precision, it's pretty impressive. That said, let's actually pick a proper unit. The Norn Emissary is probably the best pick, but I want to talk about the Haru Sphex instead. Yeah, all right. I know where you're going with this. Tell me about the Harspecs. Let me tell you about tongues and what you can use them for. You can grasp things. <laughs> You can chameleon grab an insect like a space marine and wolf it down. <laughs> 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 so, Grasping Tongue is the main weapon of the Haru Sphex as far as ranged weapons go, in a predominantly melee unit. I was gonna say, main weapon? Really? Okay then, Brad. Tell me more. For ranged. <laughs> 
So it's only got a 12 inch range, which should disqualify it, but I don't care. <laughs> All right. This is clearly an art project. The grading is just super subjective. Sure. Only one attack, ballistic skill three, strength six, AP minus two. It's sounding like a sniper. Damage, D6 plus one. All right. Beating out the maximum damage you can get out of the Vindicare Assassin. I mean, you're not wrong. Well, not his pistol, <laughs> which has the same range, but we're comparing to the sniper. Obviously. It's just very funny that you can just target eat somebody. It will always be funny. It is an entertaining art project. The sniper is just eating somebody from a distance. I don't think it's gonna get a good grade, so how about they audible and actually submit the Norn Emissary? <laughs> Alright, the Norn Emissary also has the problem of being shorter range, but it's 18, so we'll give it a little bit of leeway here. Yeah, it's not within charge distance. <laughs> So in precision mode, because it's got three modes, it's two attacks, ballistic skill two, strength eight, AP minus two, damage D3. It is in no way sneaky. It is also a giant monster, though it is on two legs. I wouldn't fail it, but it's not getting a high grade. Again, Tyranids is really weird because they don't need precision on anything because you could just be invasion fleet. And then like the whole army has inconsistent precision on the whole army, which is just terrifying. Which basically means like you just keep trying with the rest of your army until it dies kind of thing one of the venom cannons is going to hit the character eventually so it makes sense from like a design standpoint that they wouldn't put a bunch of precision on the actual sheets when that's a thing that happens from your army ability it is only one detachment rule though and it's a mode of it it's the silver bullet mode in addition that you're not normally choosing so it's niche but it's an option. I don't think Tyranids could get graded highly for any of their submissions, but they've got three really weird mediocre ones that are all different and interesting. I'm going to say the collage of bad submissions gets like a flat C, so I don't have to think about exactly where each one would lie. This is one of those homework submissions that they just kept writing, because you didn't put a cap on it, right? It was one <laughs> of those like, you know, submit a page of whatever. They hit all the points in the curriculum, but it's like a 30 page submission. Yeah. You've redlined the shit out of it, but they technically checked all <laughs> the points on the grading curriculum. Somewhere in there, every single part exists <laughs> in like a sort of coherent way that like when you section it off, it makes sense, but you have to section it off in like your own editorial way to make it actually cohesive. Yeah. Just a fucking C. Go away. It's a C me after class. Yeah. Yeah, if you do this again, <laughs> I'm not grading it. You're going to get an F. <laughs> All right, that does it for our main topic for the week. That was fun. However, we've got a lot of stuff to cover because we got to shout out patrons. And I also want to remind everybody of a couple things. First of all, if you're a patron of the show, make sure to go vote. You could be voting on the serial episode or other stuff, depending on what preference you have for the choices for this season. Obviously, no bias when we keep trying to push cereal. Cereal's not winning right now. I just want to point that out, at least when we're recording. I mostly don't want the general audience assuming we rigged it <laughs> when cereal actually doesn't win. <laughs> <laughs> and the patrons voted for something else. But if you want to be the change you want to see in the world, then you could become a patron and vote. In addition, we've got merch, which we forgot to shout out early in the episode because we're bad at YouTube. This is going to be a terrible show percent. It's going to be rough. I mean, we went a little hard last episode because like... We shouted out merch like three times, so this is probably fair. But we've got new merch specifically due to Horde Mode. Which, hey, Horde Mode 1.0 release. Take a look. Good stuff on PvE. And you could support us by getting some Horde Mode merch. Or the Memes are Canon merch, which is just <laughs> the greatest. It is actually pretty awesome. And I love the fact that there's so many layers to the joke, given that Bricky is the one that actually has to do all the selling of it. <laughs> the extra layer of it being the exact thing Bricky hates made it so much better for me specifically. It actually turned out fantastic. So super happy about, you know, the actual design. And now it is that time of the month where we have to thank all of our lovely patrons who pay us so much to keep this place running. They are 100 Johnny, 3D Frank, 4K Fart, 99 Nines, Adrian Franke, Alex Fuja, All Nighter, Andrew Kubikak, 
Bedlam's nemesis. Beth Jesus. Cameron Karen's baker. Cameron R. <laughs> the fucking pause. Oh shit, that's a lot of letters. Christian Scrulius Vickland. Christopher Gargliano. Chromavale. Craig Judge. Cube 1359. Daniel Han. Devin Voiles. Dominic Colosico. Don't touch my dingling. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get through it. <laughs> Duskers. Edward Lawrence. Ethan Gerard. Azelvor. Farseer Levithro. Finn Smiley's. Gathering Clouds. Gyarados. Happy Brontosaurus. Hellfire. Hyperion TV. Eian. Jacob Gibson. Jared DePerna. Jaden. Joel. Calix. Lucas. Le Bloop Bloop. Logan Benach. LSJ. Madison Ramanama. Matthew Sush Matthew Matthew Sushima. Eric, it was the English half of the name that you screwed up. I know. <laughs> Michael Melcher. Makes all the ideas. Mmm, burnt toast. <laughs> Followed immediately. Followed up by moist toast. The war in our patrons. Yeah. <laughs> Monkey 218. Morfield 55. Nick DeFeo. Nikki. Pierce. Proteus 7331. Retrograve. Rookie XP. Ross Warlock. Samuel Summerfield. Sarah Hansen. Squareson. The Marine who plays Tau. The Crusader 13. Thrango. Vartha Mark. Vault Guardian. Vic Laginia. Warm Hotcakes. Wallmine. And Why So Mad 2. Holy shit. That is how that it probably is said. Not nah, you so mad. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for supporting the show. <laughs> We also have a pile of producers who we thank every episode. They are Blizzard Brain, Brandon Janky, Demolition Man, Dr. Lace, Elect Man 24, Yon Guy C, Joel Rachels, Kiwi Fruit Bird, Lord Partridge II, Michael DeLulo, NJ Harlan, Noel, North, Rock, Scott Gray, The Fucking God Emperor of Mankind, The Mailman, and War Game Simulator. Thank you so much for supporting the show. And if you would like to support the show, you can support us at patreon.com slash solely singleton, joining great patrons like Seth. And that does it for us this week. We are out of here. Sounds good. <laughs>